Does hell exist? A discussion on the afterlife would not of course be complete without looking at the question of does hell exist? In most churches these days it is a subject rarely if ever discussed. The notion of hell is common to many religions, not just Christianity, and is viewed as either a fiery place or a dark cold place, both being underground. The idea that it was hot and fiery was quite understandable, since the ancients knew of volcanoes and hot springs, and so naturally assumed that the centre of the earth was just like that, which it is. However, as they had no knowledge of geology, it is easy to see how they would have wrongly associated the centre of the earth with hell. So what of more enlightened thoughts on the question of does hell exist? Well, although the more fundamentalist types still think in terms of the old idea of a fiery hell, more modern theologians tend to think of it as a separation from God. This is fine and reasonable, except that there is the one drawback that since God knows everything and is in everything for all time, how can any living thing be ever separated from God? A different modern and again reasonable idea is that hell is simply a state of nothingness experienced after death, and in this is no different to what a non-believer would expect anyway. We must of course include the universalist view, which is that everyone goes to heaven and so there is no need of hell, or if it does exist it is merely a temporary state before all eventually become one with God. As they see it, how could a loving and just God subject people to such suffering? There are of course many other variants on these themes, ranging from the ancient Greeks, Hebrews, Egyptians, Persians and so on, far too numerous to outline here. There is one idea which I feel is worth mentioning here. It was developed by the astronomer Sir Fred Hoyle as a possible explanation of both time and consciousness. It is explained as an analogy and so I will use his words. Along one wall of an office we have one complete set of pigeon holes, all in their tidy sequence. Along another wall we have another set of pigeon holes, two completely different sets, but there is only one light. It dances about in both sets of pigeon holes. Wherever it happens to be, there is the phenomenon of consciousness. One set of pigeon holes is what you call you. The other is what I call me. It would be possible to experience both and never knew it. It would be possible to follow the little patch of light wherever it went. There would be only one consciousness, although there must certainly be more than one set of pigeonholes. To quote John Gribbin on this theory, the subjective impression is still one of time flowing, of the past being gone and the future yet to come. But every consciousness state that can be triggered and re-triggered indefinitely and in any order. We may, on this theory, relive our youth and age repeatedly, tangled up in any old order of events and never know it. We may even be simply single facets of one all-embracing cosmic consciousness. Against that intriguing puzzle must be set the apparent implication that if everything that may be already is and is fixed in four-dimensional space-time, then free will disappears and we have no way of changing the fixed pattern at all. But all is not lost. All things may be fixed in the sense that the set of holes are established, but which set of pigeon holes will the spot of light play on? Never mind which individual holes and in which order. Are some universes merely dead ends, never activated by consciousness? Whether this theory is true or not I cannot say, but what I do know is it is worth remembering as we live our lives 
because if it is true we would eventually live the lives of those we have harmed in any way and similarly the lives of those we have been kind to hell would be simply our time enduring the suffering that we would ourselves have inflicted on others it would certainly bring into sharp focus the golden rule of do unto others as we would have them do unto us